Okay, so let's talk about rates of reactions in, in very simplistic ways. Um, we're going to show you how temperature, concentration, and a catalyst affect a rate of reaction. The first is temperature. Here I have a beaker full of um, water and actually snow from outside. Um, and you can see the temperature is what, zero degrees Celsius, right? Which right it should be because it's in between freezing and melting. So zero degrees Celsius. And here I have a beaker full of hot water right from the tap, which is about 45, a little short of 45 degrees Celsius. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna put in Alka-Seltzer tablets. And um, Alka-Seltzer tablets. Uh, I'll put in one of each at the same time. And you can see the one in the hot water is certainly going and reacting much quicker than the one with the cold water. That's pretty evident. Um, matter of fact, the one with the warm water is practically nearly all dissolved. The one with the cold water will be here all day. The other thing I want to show you is concentration. Um, here I have two test tubes. Um, let me get some water out of here. You heard the bell. Um, so, in one of these, I'm going to put one molar hydrochloric acid, which is a decent concentration. I'll put a, let's see, um, one, two, we'll go with three, three squirts. Um, and then I have six molar concentration hydrochloric acid, so it's six times as concentrated than the previous acid. So one, two, three. So we got about the same volume of acid. And I have two little pieces of magnesium here, which is going to react um, with the acid. I'm gonna put them in at the same time. And we would expect that the more concentrated acid is gonna chug away and eat at that metal much quicker. And you can see that it, it most certainly is. As a matter of fact, the one with the more concentrated acid has already eaten that piece of metal completely. It's no longer there. Whereas the one molar is still trying to chew away at that piece of metal. So the six molar obviously much more powerful. Um, and by the way, bottom of this test tube is pretty warm because of that happening. So obviously higher concentration reactions happen quicker. <clears throat> higher temperature reactions happen quicker. Um, and then I want to show you um, what we call a catalyst. Catalyst is a material, as you know, that gets involved with the chemical reaction, helps lower the activation energy, which makes the reaction go faster, um, but doesn't actually, quote unquote, get consumed in the reaction. So in this beaker, I'm gonna put a very concentrated hydrogen peroxide. This is 30%. The stuff at home is only 3%. Um, handling this stuff, I have to be careful, because if I don't remember to wash it off my hands, I'll, I'll get a chemical burn. Um, so I'm going to pour a little bit of this 30% hydrogen peroxide in this beaker, not a lot. Now, it's in a brown bottle because hydrogen peroxide is very unstable and naturally decays. It breaks down. H2O2 will break down into H2O and liberate or give off oxygen gas. So when it's in the brown bottle, that um, decomposition doesn't happen as quickly because the sunlight isn't able to get to the material. That sunlight's extra energy that would allow it to break down faster. So now that this is in sunlight, this could theoretically break down more quickly. Um, it'll take several days though for that hydrogen peroxide to let go of that extra oxygen and just become water. But if I add a catalyst, something like manganese dioxide, um, it's gonna liberate that oxygen gas or help that um, hydrogen peroxide you know, break down, decompose, and liberate that oxygen gas very quickly. And so I'm just gonna take 
this wooden splint. I'm gonna take just a little, little bit of this black powder. I didn't realize my splint was broken, but we'll do we'll deal with it. So this little bit of black powder, that's your, that's your manganese dioxide. That's my catalyst. And so I'm gonna put it into the beaker and suddenly you'll notice it's bubbling quite a bit, giving me oxygen gas. That's oxygen gas coming off there. And I know that it's oxygen gas because oxygen gas helps burning. So if I light my splint on fire, Um, and I put it into this beaker, it should make it burn brighter, and it does. Or another dramatic experiment is to blow, sorry, blow out this splint, have it glowing, and put it back into the beaker. And oh, I guess I ran out, I used it all. Huh. Well, all right, we're gonna try this again. We're gonna use the hydrogen peroxide. This is still the same old stuff that I had before, but like I said, I don't think it's really 30%. Oopsie, uh, because of the way it's behaving, I think it's old and degraded over time. That's okay. Um, let's get some fresh manganese dioxide. Get it in there. Get that reaction going. There we go. That's a good amount of gas going on there. Look at that oxygen gas coming off. How do I know? Well, again, it will help burning. Or if I have a glowing splint, it'll definitely, you know, there's my glowing splint. It'll definitely catch it back on fire again. There you go. That's what I was looking for beforehand. So, hey, well, so that manganese dioxide is helping that hydrogen peroxide decompose much more quickly than it would normally, giving me that oxygen gas. Now, if I want that manganese dioxide back, if I want that black powder back, I could, in theory, let this settle out. I can, in theory, filter it and get that black powder back to be reusable. Um, and you can use that black powder, that manganese dioxide, over and over and again for this particular scenario. Okay, uh, I'm going to show you a dramatic example of the um, manganese dioxide uh, with the hydrogen peroxide and what we call a genie in a bottle um, to show you an energy situation with that. All right, hang in there. This is the setup uh, for a uh, genie in a bottle demo where we put some hydrogen peroxide. Uh, in a two liter bottle uh, and we put in a little manganese dioxide and, and, and let that um, decomposition happen with the, uh, with the addition of that catalyst. But you know what, we're gonna do this in class. So um, this is the uh, very um, expensive equipment that we're gonna use. Uh, but if you pay attention in class, we'll see this uh, demo in action. So stay tuned.